previously on Iyama Fix My Life. One father with 34 children by 17 women. Let me show you what you created. Did it ever dawn on you, let me get a vasectomy? No. Why not? I don't have a problem with what I created. Irresponsible. All three of y'all were pregnant at the same time. You're still sleeping with him, and he's got a two-year-old with another woman. You let a penis penetrate the friendship. Penis! It's not that we missed him, it's that he's missed us. As a father, I messed up. There's a whole lot Mr. of stuff. Mr. J, you dropped them. They don't care why. My kids, I never wanted them to be a none of this. And all because of you. I just want to leave you. OK, so go ahead and leave. Don't chase him. Don't follow him. If he's done, I'm done. I apologize. I humbly ask for your forgiveness. It's your choice. There's no way this man can be a normal father. Tonight, a special Iyanla Fix My Life, the mega follow-up to the mega fix. One father with 34 children by 17 women. The Fix My Life that sent shockwaves through social media. Now, we have some unfinished business. The mothers are back for more healing. Why are women settling for wounded men? Did you go for the person, the penis, or the promise? I was holding on to the promise. What do you tell your child about her father when he has 34 children? You got sons. What do you say to them? This isn't about them. It's really about us. We got to own our stuff, ladies. And what's happened since the show aired? Wait a minute, hold up. Are you saying to me that you are not sure that Jay Williams is the father of your son? Next. Thank you. Go ahead, draw First of all, I want to thank you for being here. You know that these are four sister women here. You've seen them over the past three weeks in the Jay Williams story that we've been doing. But this isn't about them. I met with them earlier to have a conversation about them. And I shared with them that it's really about us. I always say I'm not my sister's keeper. I am my sister. If my sister has done it, I've done it. So today, I want us to have a healing conversation. And we thank our sister women for being here. And, you know, I, I was on um, Twitter. Now, what is it called? Twitter. <laughs> that. I was on Twitter. And I saw some of the comments, mean-spirited, judgmental, ugly comments. And I said, we don't even realize that we're talking about ourselves. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, there is a devastating lack of personal responsibility among black women. This is not a black issue. Right. No. Right. We as women surrendering our power yes. and creating the penis between us. Yeah. That ain't black. Yeah. And when I say a penis between us, I mean a penis between us as women, friends, you and your ride or die BFF are fine until you meet him and then you don't return her calls. Hello, am I by myself? A penis between us, between us and our dignity. You know, so I guess the question is how many of us have settled for and attracted men who can't even meet the basic criteria? Raise your hand, come on. You, you're not basic criteria. Okay, and then Here's the question that concerns me, sister women. Then how many of us have had children and brought children into these kinds of relationships? Hello. <laughs> so here's what I want you to do. I want you to have the courage right now. Look under your chair. There's a card, a piece of paper, and a pen. I want you to write down the name of the man or the oh, penis God. or the man in the penis. Just write down the name. Come on. Write it down, and I want you to pass those cards forward. And if it's more than one, write down more than one. Write it down. How many, how many cards you need? <laughs> Fold it in half. But wait a minute. Let me ask you this. How many of us still have shame and guilt attached to this card? 
fold it up, go on, fold it up, fold it up, and pass them to the boxes. Now here's what I'm gonna do, give me the boxes. Okay. I want us to see this. You know, because so very often, you know, we have issues and challenges and wounds and we cover them up, okay? But here's what I want you to get. You've written the name on here, but the problem that brought this into your life is still in the chair with you. And that's what we need to talk about today, yeah? So for the past three weeks on Iyamla Fix My Life, we have seen wonderfulness, <laughs> chaos, and wahala, and dramazma, <laughs> created by one man who fathered 34 children with 17 women, and women who allowed that into their lives because they didn't know what they needed and what they needed to heal was in the chair with them. Here's what happened. Let me ask the question straight up, no chaser right now. Who is still in intimate sexual relationship with this man? You are. Are you? Well, I guess as we're trying to work things out, I guess. Why would a woman settle for a relationship with a man who is incapable of being a present father. He would pay the bills, but he would not pay the bills on time. So he's always a day late and a dollar short. He doesn't have time to see all of them. And I never wanted that for my kids at all. I have one child by Jay, but my son doesn't know that Jay is his father. It really struck a nerve on social media. And how old are your children? 11, 12, and 5. Yeah. All three of y'all were pregnant at the same time. Yes. I came to find out there was another child being born maybe a couple of months after my son. You betrayed your sister friend, and then you both settled for less than you needed or wanted. Both of you are responsible for yourself, for your choices, for your decisions. And my question is, why? It hurts my heart that you are angry with her. That breaks my heart that as women, that, that you let a penis penetrate your friendship. A penis! I can't do it no more. What it, can't you do? Tell me, tell us, be in this What does it tell, because let's tell them what it is. Because you know why? Because of all this. And my kids, I never wanted them to be a none of this. None of it. And all because of you. And it has really broken me to where I feel like I'm not a whole person, a whole woman. And I know I'm better than this. I know it. Oh, my God. For me, the most profound piece of this story was the work with the mothers, to get them to understand that they only had a piece and that that piece in and of itself was not functional. Ooh. Aisha, Shantae, Charmaine, and Ayana. And the dolls are here. <laughs> because we have some unfinished business. And, and you are still crying when you see that. Tell, tell me why. Because it hurts. Tell me what hurts. When you see this, and you, un and you see that, and you understand that what attracted that into your life is still in the chair with you, what hurts? Just, I guess, the lies that were told, you know, and the promises that were made, and it hurts. So did you go for the person, the penis, or the promise? Person and the promise. The person and the promise. Mm -hmm. Beloved sister woman, you have four children with this man. What were you missing that he brought you? The companionship. Who knows what she's talking about? Not wanting to be alone. How many have children and afraid that if you don't accept this little bit, you won't get nothing else? Raise your hand. 
I'm, I'm, because you're, you're not, this is not your business. You're speaking for the world. So let us, as women, not turn our nose up, you know, thinking that in your deficit and dysfunction that you better than somebody else's deficit. Because the truth is, the deficit and dysfunction is still in the chair with you. Because the name is up here in the box. OK, wait a minute, hold up. Push pause. Are you saying to me that you are not sure that Jay Williams, the father of 34, is the father of your son? Tonight on the Unlove Fix My Life, a topic that struck a nerve around the country and all over social media. One man, 34 children, 17 different mothers. It's our follow-up special where we're working with women who have settled for broken men, looking at what happens when we allow our attractions and addictions to these men to come between us. Who up here still wants to be with Jay? <laughs> I know you ain't looking at me. <laughs> But how did you get to three children? You would have had four, too, but mm -hmm. you have three. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say, no? When I had nothing else, nothing else for myself to give to my children, um, my friends, even have family turn their nose up, to. But what is it that they were ashamed of? See, I, they, I, I want us to speak it out what they were, into the light in this healing space. What they were ashamed of is me. That I was with a man. That I was with a man. Who? Who had so many children. And? And was dishonest. And was dishonest. Yeah. OK, who's ever had the mother, your grandmother, auntie, friend say, you don't, you don't need to be with him, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Why can't we hear that? Tell me why we can't hear it. We can't hear it because we haven't told them the whole story. So they don't know what he says to us when we're laying in the bed. Exactly. Right. And he's making his promises. Yeah. Or when he's calling at midnight and saying, oh, I was playing basketball and I just kind of got, time got, kind of got away from me. Mm -hmm. They don't hear those good things that they say to us. Midnight that make playing us... basketball is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not. You mean that we don't tell them the truth about all of the decadence. Yes. Yes. Why else can't we hear it? And it's also about admitting that we're wrong. We chose wrong. Who we would have to also would rather that. gouge your eyeball out with a plastic spoon <laughs> than to say I'm wrong? Right. Right. <laughs> Just gouge it out! Get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. OK. So here's, here's a challenge that we as women have to address in our sisterhood circles, our church groups, our journals, wherever. What do we need to hear when we're being warned? Danger, 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 <laughs> stranger danger. OK, what do we need to hear? What did you need to hear that you didn't hear? What did I need to hear? Hmm. Actually, I didn't hear anything. I can't hear it all. I didn't. I really didn't. It's a hard question. Mm -hmm. You know I love you already, right? <laughs> yes. I want you to close your eyes and dig deep down in there someplace. Mm -hmm. And I want you to answer this question for me. The real reason I stayed was? Because I didn't want to be alone. Yeah. Own that. The real reason I stayed the was? The real reason why I stayed is because I didn't want to be alone. Can you own that? I can own that. Let me hear it. The real reason I stayed because I didn't want to be alone. Why did you stay? I stayed because I ex accepted. I just settled. I settled, and, and, and in my settling, I was fighting myself to get out. Why did you stay? The same reason, I think. Being alone, I didn't want to be alone. Because if you were alone, what? I would begin to think about things from the past or things that hurt me. Such as? Abandonment. By? By my dad. Yep. Who got, who's daddyless daughters? Raise your hand. OK, first <laughs> love left you, broke your heart, abandonment. Yeah. 
how many of us abandon ourselves? Yeah. 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 I completely lost myself in that relationship. Yeah. And that's where the, that's where the shame started. In the relationship, no. Remember, the penis, the promise, the thing is here. What was in the chair with you when he showed up? Mm -hmm. What was in I the was chair? I was missing companionship. I was missing that person that I thought I could be with. And this is my friend. This is, my, this is the person that I'm going to spend some time with that I, I really care about, who loves me, who listens to me. And we can do everything together. We can accomplish so many things together. Because at that time, we were spending a lot of time together. We were moving around, making, just doing everything. And so so the that, person that gave you companionship and the promise of a future. Absolutely. Okay. How has the show impacted your relationship with Jay? How has it changed you? Let me say that. I think after speaking with you, I learned a lot about myself that I was in denial about. And it helped me move forward with my current relationship. I know the things that I expect him to do. I know the things that I should do. And it just made me a better person. Yeah. So has your son seen the show? Absolutely not. Because? Because, for one, I'm not sure. You're not sure? Not sure. You're not sure what? I'm not sure if, in my heart, and without a test, I am not sure if Jay's his father. My son grew up. OK, wait a minute. Hold up. Push pause. Are you saying to me that you are not sure that Jay Williams, the father of 34, is the father of your son? Yes. So that means that you were sleeping with two men at the same time? At the end, yes. And weren't protecting yourself? Yes. That's a question. Why don't we protect ourselves? Because men, they can do a lot. They cannot have babies. Mm -hmm. We have babies. And we don't protect ourselves. OK, so you're not sure. Have you tested the other person? No. You don't need to test Jay. <laughs> you can test the other person. Mm -hmm. But here is the more important element for me as a woman, that you are living out of integrity. Yes, I was. You are still. You are still living out of integrity and being dishonest in a way that doesn't impact your life. It impacts your son's life. Mm -hmm. He's illegitimate. Even if there's a man in his life who has raised him, legitimacy is established when the father names and claims the son or yes. the child. That's legitimacy. So you have, you have allowed your son to live illegitimately because of your stuff, not because of you. Do you get that? I do. Yeah. And how does that feel for you? At first, I was in denial, but I've owned it now. And I had to make a, a decision. Do you tell this man that I married that there's a possibility that the man that I was with right before I met you could be his father? But and not, shatter? Not, that? not, yeah, but you know what? Look how you shattered yourself that within a 28 day period you were with two men. What was going on for you? I did. What was going on for you? That's where you, the healing is. I think that I used him as a way to say, I'm escaping from Jay. And but, I felt but, like. But you hadn't healed. How many of us? go from one relationship to the next without closure. Come on. Let me, here's what I want you to get, what a wound is. A wound is when you hurt or injure yourself. How many of us were teenage mothers? OK. OK, that's a wound. So now, repetitive wounds of a similar nature become a break. It's like you keep pushing on the sore spot. Now, when something is broken, it has a crack in it. And now all sorts of infection and contamination and germs can get into the crack. Most of us come into this relationship cracked. 
And these men are the infection. Now, do we blame the infection or do we blame the crack? The crack is our responsibility. Is that in this audience anywhere where you've allowed one man to believe that your child was his when it was somebody else? Have the courage. Stand up. Okay, wait a minute, hold up. Push pause. Are you saying to me that you are not sure that Jay Williams, the father of 34, is the father of your son? Yes. So that means that you were sleeping with two men at the same time? At the end, yes. See, I believe if it's in the chair, it's in the room. Is that in this audience where you've allowed one man to believe that your child was his when it was somebody else. Have the courage, because we do. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I did Thank that. you for your courage. I did Thank that. you for your courage. You. Stay up. Stay there. Stand in your coop. <laughs> yeah, so what happened? I, uh... And she ain't no young chicky. She <laughs> ain't even another love and hip-hop generation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm 67, so, Praise and God. I want to say this to you ladies. When I saw this show, it was me. And I said, God, dog, it's still that kind of pain. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I left my daughter, she was five. Mm -hmm. And then as my daughter got older, she started looking like the father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really was her father. You know, so I finally told her, you know, and she's like, well, it's OK. And Why didn't dad, you tell mama? Tell me. The ashamed. reason I did, ashamed. ashamed. What were you ashamed of? My behavior. That you had been with two men at once. Yeah, and I always was kind of wild. And I was always treated, like, in my family, I always felt like I was the worst one in the family. And this was just adding to who I was. What were you going you know? for at that time? The person, the penis, or the promise? What were you going All for? All of it. All of it. All of it. A person to? Make me feel good. And the penis? To make me feel good. <laughs> Temporary relief. <laughs> but you know, and the other thing is, and, and this is the piece that I really hope we get. You know, extended and extensive pain will render you unconscious. Yeah. Wow. I never even thought about that. Well, at 67, you can I think should about do some it. thinking. Yeah, sure. right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Now, here's this, this is straight talk now. This is straight up talk. I really want us to understand how and why men use sex to get what they want. So, we asked a few men this question, and here's what they said. I would describe myself in the past as someone that was selfish, didn't really care too much of what others thought of me. I used to use sex as, as a tool to, to get credit, to get things signed in my name, you know, apartments, cars, things of that nature. Um, not with the real intent to, to father children, but that's what happened. A lot of men feel, you know, that if they can perform really, really good in bed, whatever that means to them, that it's enough to keep a woman hooked. Women have a tendency to have this, what I call, hope factor. Uh, most men don't take a woman's heart into consideration. Call me a womanizer or whatever the case may be, but, you know, it's, you know, sex is, it's just been about sex, and if it was a relationship, then it was a relationship. I've heard some kids' moms say, you know, later on out of anger, this was a mistake, it wasn't a bad choice on their part, or this and that, but when you're having sex continually with some, you know, body, and you know they already had multiple children, you know they're fertile, I mean, why would you take a chance? Every time I've been involved with one of them, everybody's known that, you know, how many children I had at the time, so, um, Takes two to tango, right? Take a breath. How do you feel when you hear that? 
It's, um, I, I, I'm not really surprised, but it's, it's true. It's the truth. How do you it feel? It's the painful truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, painful like, truth. Because I'm sitting here looking at it, and I'm like, wow. 28 children, 17 women. Yeah. I want us to understand this is a man and we're hearing, so can we hear this? Because we can't hear it when our girlfriends are telling us, when our mama right. and our auntie are saying, did you hear that? So here's my question. Why didn't you protect yourself? It's one thing for us to need the person, the penis, or the promise, but why do we have children in those situations? Why? Why? I guess just still holding on to that promise. You were? Yeah. I was holding on to the promise. I was holding on to the promise. I want you to, cl everybody close your eyes. Just close your eyes, everybody, close your eyes. I'm gonna ask this hard question, because this is a truth that I had to come to about in myself. How many of us have the baby thinking, if I have the baby, I'll have him? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, thank you. I think more of you have that experience and just don't have the courage to speak it, but until you speak it, you, you can't heal it. What do you tell your children about their father who has 34 children? What is your conversation? I really want to encourage you to get clear about why your son doesn't know who his father is, because I don't think that it's really about Jay not being there. I think it's the break in you. I, I can tell the truth for myself. My son has a, his father, he didn't know who his father was because I had a man in my life who was raising him. And because I wanted the fantasy, the promise that I was gonna look good in public and everybody, everything was gonna be nice and sweet, I'll let my son think that this is his father until that guy left and then is when I came face to face with my shame. The shame that I tried to cover up with a penis. Wasn't even the person. I'm, I'm straight up, it was the penis. <laughs> you know, the temporary relief from a lifetime of pain that allowed me to lie to my son about who his father was. You know, in the moment, you can tell yourself this fictitious story, but when you get in the quiet of your own soul, you gotta find the inner authority to recreate that story. Okay, what do you tell your child about her father? First of all, my, my, my child with Jay is five years old. Okay, so I have a teenager who met Jay at five. Okay. And as she's learning the, and understanding what's going on, I broke it to her. I, you, you cannot date a man like Jay, you have to make better decisions. You know, don't make the same mistakes that I made. And I, I broke it down to her, what I did, what I didn't do. And uh, you just have to be honest. What do you tell your four children about their father who has 34 children? What do you tell them about their father? Well, since my girls are younger, the only um, questions that I'm getting now is from my son. And he's like, how old is he? He's not. So he's just like, well, when he goes to spend the night with um, his brother, and it's like, well, is that my brother? Is his brother my brother? Is his sister it's my confusing. sister? Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, are you two friendly? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. What do you tell your children? How many boys do you have? Three. Three boys. All three of your children are boys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Three boys with Jay, but I have one older. Okay. What do you tell your children about their father who has 34 children? What is your conversation? First, I, you know, I always explain to them that, you know, it doesn't matter what daddy do. First and foremost, he do love you. He just made some pretty bad decisions in his life. And it's kind of selfish of him that, and selfish of me to bring you into this life of dealing with such a selfish, you know, mommy was selfish at one time and daddy was selfish at one time. That's pretty much how you got here. But I tell my children that, you know, 
just be happy that you have so many sisters but and brothers. But you've got sons, mm -hmm. and the father that they're looking to mm -hmm. is not definitely a, a, a powerful demonstration of manhood. Right. So what do you say to them? And that's funny, because me and, I was walking to the store the other day with my boys, and my 11-year-old son said he wanted to have two children. I said, well, what do you mean you want to have two children? He said, I want to have two children, but they're not going to be by the same woman. I said, no, no. I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break this. We're going to fix Pathology. this. Pathology. Yeah. I said, just because your dad did that does not mean that's you. That's your life. Yeah, you are cut from his cloth, but you don't have to wear that cloth all the time. Well, it because yeah, but it's about teaching our children mm -hmm. how to create relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the, 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 the quote is, when you educate a man, you educate a man, but when you educate a woman, you educate a nation, mm -hmm. and you educate a family, you educate a community. Mm -hmm. So that is very important. In, during our original show, mm -hmm. you reached out to Shantae, mm -hmm. and you held on to her at a time when she was in mm -hmm. difficulty. He's not a bad person. No, he's, he's not. He's broken. Yeah. He's not whole. Yep. He doesn't mean to hurt you, but he will. Tell her. Ain't you no know, woman gonna help him heal himself. Yes. His mother, his father, nobody. He gotta fix that on his own. What, what did you see there that made you want to reach out to her? I seen me in her. And what part of you? I seen the broke. The pain, um, the uh, you know the the confusion, being lost, being alone. I've seen it all. I've, I've seen it all in her. So you saw that in her, and you could reach out and touch her. And I think that's important because you have the children. Mm -hmm. You have the children, and I think at one point they're going to need each other. Are you healed? Am I healed? That leg tells me no. Was this your friend? Mm hmm And did you know she was involved with Jay? No. You did not. Charmaine, why are you lying, Charmaine? Excuse me. Excuse You're me. a liar. Excuse me. Like, but I, she's Excuse not going to sit and yeah, lie, though. Don't we, lie. we, as women, don't want to be in a she's place. She's a liar. I'm just disgusted with well, her voice, me, her look. Just everything well, about just her disgusts me. But are you disgusted me. with yourself? Um, I was. I'm over it, though. But you can't be over your disgust with yourself if you're still projecting that on her, baby, because y'all were in the same place. And I get the Even betrayal. Even we were in the same place, she put herself in that position. You know, understand what I'm saying? She interjected herself. You Lies. think so? I know so. <laughs> she don't have a penis. It hurts my heart that you are angry with her. That breaks my heart that as women, that, that you let a penis penetrate your friendship. Penis! Why are you and Nicole still fighting about your relationship with Jay? Um, I'm not fighting with her. I did my self-healing, which I'm, I'm still doing the process, two years ago when I decided, made the choice to leave and to work on me first, because if I'm not whole for myself, I cannot teach my children yeah. anything, being that I'm the only parent that they look at 24-7. When you think about the mess that you brought your children into, what do you tell yourself? I thought I was doing the right thing, and now I'm trying to clean up what I thought was right, because I wanted him to have that perfect father, that guy that was showing me the perfect love, and I knew that Jay wasn't going to be that person. But was it your son's need for the love, or was it your unfulfilled need for the love? It was definitely mine, but I was, I thought that I was protecting him by not having him have to be like, well, where was daddy at? Where's he at? How come he's not here? When I had a man that was, that was there. Like, you, you, you could have had both. And sometimes I think our limited thinking what, what do you think when you look down the hall and say, I've got three children mm -hmm. by a man who has 34 children? What do you tell yourself about the mess 
you brought your kids into. I have to take responsibility, and I have taken responsibility. I have taken responsibility. I have. What about you? Because in the show, you made a statement. You said, I never wanted this for my kids, and it's all because of you. But that's not true. All right. I take responsibility for my fault in this also, because I could have stopped it at one child. And you didn't because? Because I was still holding on to that promise. Okay, you've got to know that. Thank you for saying that. You've got to know that. So know that your weak point, your weak spot, is the promise with absolutely no evidence, <laughs> okay? Right. What do you say? You, you had one child. What do you say? When I look at what I brought her into, I, um, I've accepted responsibility for what I've done and how I've allowed myself to, you know, get involved to the extent that I did. And I just know that I learned through the process what That's I did what not want. Learn I learned process. what I deserve. You know, I have two beautiful children, and I know that they don't deserve, you know, this, the chaos. And neither do you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Are and you so, healed? I've, yeah, I am. You are healed. Yes, are you healed? I'm going through my healing process. You're in this healing process mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And what do you think you're healing? Myself. Uh, from? From the hurt, the pain, and getting back myself, getting my power back. And that's what I felt I lost. Did he take it or did you give your power away? I gave it away. Okay. We got to own that. Okay. Are you healed? Am I healed? That leg tells me no. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> right. The leg just started going. Right. So I'm gonna yeah. say no. And what do you what do you have to heal? Um, my self worth, to be honest. My self worth. Um, pretty much setting some. Guidelines and some rules and not tolerating standards. Yes. Yeah, standards. What is the standard? What did you learn in your last relationship mm -hmm. that helps you to create a standard for this relationship? And does the person you're engaging with meet your standards? My standard is I want a man who tells the truth. Right. I want a man who honors his word. Right. I want some, a man who shows up on time. I want a man who's bringing something to the table that's beneficial to us both, not just to me. I, I got my own table and my own napkins and my own plates. Right. I don't need you to bring that to the table. I need you to bring something to the table that's going to benefit us both. So if I got the salad, you got the dressing. Uh, yeah. Are you healed? No. No. Do you know what you're healing? Yes. Would you be willing to share? I want to prove who my son's father is. And I thought that I moved on 12 years ago. And in fact, I didn't, because I still had that hidden past, which is why I came. Women, as women, we cannot allow the person the penis or the promise to make us live out of integrity. We just have to stop that. And, and one of the ways is not only to have standards, but also to know if you can't do it out in the light, you should not be doing it in the dark. Right. Now, it doesn't always go bad because we have somebody that has a husband that had many kids before they came together. Is that right? Yes. So what is, what is your story, beloved? I'm married to a guy who has, it's a total of 11 children. One's deceased, but it was six different mothers. Uh, we've been married as of today, 10 years. So you're in a, in a marriage with a man who has several mothers for his children. What were you going for? At that time, he, was, he showed me interest. He showed me interest, and what I mean by that is I, I grew up without my father, so, and I slept around with whoever I wanted to because I could. And so this guy showed interest in something more than just me sleeping with him. Do we get that? We gotta hear that. We gotta hear that. 
So for some of us, it's just a mere fact that they pay attention to us. Yeah. And so before we go tonight, it's, it's really my, my hope that, first of all, you heard some part of yourself and got some understanding, but that the only way out of the cycle of being in pain and then being wounded and then being broken and it, attracting that, attracting it, is you've got to tell the truth. You've got to tell the truth about where you're broken, what you feel, what you've done, what you heard. What You've got to tell the truth and stop making up these pretty wonderful stories to protect other people. You really got to tell the truth, the truth, <laughs> you gotta, the truth. You got to tell the truth. And then we have to accept total and complete responsibility for the choices we make, the behaviors we demonstrate, like you said, you were reckless, you were reckless. We, we got to accept responsibility for that and, and, and be willing to stand in it and say, you know, I was reckless. Yeah. I could sleep with anybody I wanted to because I could. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, put your big girl panties on and tell your truth because if you don't, the, the lie will keep you here. Yeah. And when you're here, you're going to get bottom feeders. Mm. All right? Yeah. And the other thing is forgiveness forgiveness, first of yourself for the things that you did from your broken place. Forgiveness for the people that you invited in to continue wounding you. Forgiveness for voluntary participation in your own suffering. Forgiveness, that'll heal everything. Has everybody heard something here tonight that they can take home? So I think my work is done. I want to thank these four sisters that have come today for you to continue to stay in communication, to, to support each other, to welcome other women in, because you all represent 34 children. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. For thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Do your work, okay? I see y'all. Maybe I won't. Ha, ha, ha.